today we're trying our first cookery video. Lily's going to help me with this one. And we're making a recipe we haven't made before, so it's something new. Something from your Barbie cookbook, isn't it, Lily? Yes. And it's called Jam Hearts. So we're going to make some little biscuits. It's basically um, a, a big version of Jam Tarts, but just biscuits instead of top, in terms of top. Absolutely. So, we're using stalk butter. And we're going to weigh out 160 grams first of all. So we're going to very carefully scoop and just watch our scales. And then you can use the other spoon to just slide it off if you need to. And we're looking for a 160. Mm. Always make sure when you start with your scales they're on zero. And we're weighing in grams for this recipe. And you can use one spoon to slide it off the other and do a nice one big six scoop. Zero. 160 would be perfect. It's always handy to have all your ingredients and your equipment out on the side just so you're not dashing around the kitchen trying to find things. Okay, do a really big scoop this time. Okay, right. Like digging for sand. Can you help? Yeah. Okay. No. That's it. And then we we'll use the other spoon to slide it carefully. What? Okay, so zero. we need to do another yeah, just under 100 grams, so really big scoop. Would you like me to help you with that one? Please. And do you want to slide it off with the other spoon? Yep. Yeah. I'll find it Okay, so we need to just slide it. That's it, use your hand just to slide it in. There we go. And we need 50 grams more, so do you want to do the same again? Yep. Slide it up. And we need 10 grams, so just a smidge in now just to finish that one up. Okay, lovely. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to, over by one. we're going to use a glass mixing bowl, but you can use a plastic one. I'm just using this one because I'm at home, but you can use a plastic or a metal one. And Doesn't Lily's really going to use matter. the wooden spoon just as to slide. As long you don't smash it. That's true. Because if you smash it, then you won't be able to cook. Would you? And you're going to put the butter into the bowl. Okay, we're going to add some caster sugar now. So we're using golden caster sugar. You can use white caster sugar as well. And Lily's going to help measure out 80 grams, so we need an 8 and a 0, so nice and slowly into the scales. Keep watching those numbers going up. Give it a little it. tap on the bottom. That's it. 8 and a 0, 65. Ooh. Okay. Fit. Now oh, very yeah. carefully, <gasps> slide the sugar all into the bowl for me. It, make sure you get all of that there. That and then we're going to pop those yeah. out of the way. Now I'd like you to use one hand to hold the bowl steady and the other hand we're going to cream the butter and sugar together so it's nice and smooth. Can you help please? Mommy. So we're just going Can to start beat the, the two together and you'll notice all the sugar disappears into the butter. Good idea just to have one hand on the bowl to hold it steady otherwise it likes to slide around and spin. As your butter gets warm, it gets a little bit easier to do, and you're going to change the colour a little bit. So just keep pressing it round. It smells gorgeous. <laughs> the more you mix it, the smoother it comes, so you can start to get nice and creamy. But what? Oh, did I introduce Yes, we'll talk Okay, so would you like to have a little mix now? So hold the yeah. bowl nice and steady and keep mixing around. So you're going to beat those two together. So this recipe is nice and simple, doesn't need lots of ingredients. We've got butter and sugar. We're going to be using some plain flour, some strawberry jam and some icing yeah. sugar as well. So just get those you muscles. You don't need to make the strawberry jam or the icing sugar. You can make icing sugar. You, can, you could have um, mixed the um, made icing and then put sugar in it to make it into icing sugar. So that's looking nice and smooth and creamy. I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can see in a moment. Okay, so that's you can see. your elbow. Nice and smooth and creamy. Nice. OK, 
Okay, now the next ingredient, we're going to use our sieve, we're going to add our flour, so we're using plain flour, and we're going to use 240 grams, so we need to weigh this first, yep, have to use plain one for this recipe, we don't want our biscuits to rise, so not like when we make our cupcakes and our sponges, they will rise, okay, so we need 240 grams, so we're going to leave the sieve on there for now, so we'll sift it through in a moment, and just rest it on there, and we need to do 240 grams in here. So, so what numbers are they? So a two, a four, and a zero on our scales. Triple zero. Triple zero. And you take Keep your time just to make sure you weigh them out nice and accurately. Weighing and measuring is a little bit more important when you're doing your baking. It's, it's almost like a science. So you need, we're gonna make a nice dough to start with for this biscuit, which we're going to chill in the fridge for about 15 minutes. Then we're going to cut out our shapes and we'll recap that as we go. So we're just into 200 now, so we just need to keep going as a little bit more. Lily, tell me when we get there. Okay, we'll... There we go. Oh, two okay. for one. Two for Just one's okay. One. Anything up to five grams over or under is okay. Now, very carefully, with one hand, you need to hold the sieve and rest it on there. Okay. And then we're going to just put the flour through the sieve. Also helps to make sure there's nothing in the bag of flour that you don't want in there. No lumps, especially with good with icing sugar, because that can stick together in the bag. And then there's a couple of ways you can use the sieve. So you can either shake it from side to side like Lily's doing, or you can hold it steady and just give it a good tap. Like, or you can use one hand to and shake And just be it. nice and slow and steady so that you don't miss the bowl. That's it. And then just give it a little you bit of a tap. Can it with one hand? Yep. Can you shake it with one Probably hand? Probably find you've got more control with two and always watch what you're doing. So don't lift the sieve up too high. The one thing you don't want to do is lift the sieve up and down because obviously flour will go all over your kitchen. That's it, so we're just making sure there's no lumps in there. Okay, and then can we just rest the sieve on the side? Yes. Excellent. Now, can you going to mix your flour together with your butter and sugar? So slowly to start with, otherwise lots of the flour will try and come out of the bowl. And it's going to be quite a thick mixture because we're making a dough here. Help, please. Well, give it a go to start with, and then nice and slowly mix them together. So we're going to bring this together into a dough, so you've got to keep mixing and really work that butter to get the moisture out and then we're going to be kneading our dough in a moment so it looks like it's very dry to start with so just keep mixing around with the back of the spoon when most of the loose flour is gone and it starts to get really lumpy then you can get your hands in the loose flour yeah, and then when you can get your hands in so you'll see it starts to come together in lumps Okay, so you need to make sure that it's getting really crumbly. So it starts off a little bit like breadcrumbs, and then we're going to keep going till it's really lumpy. So not yet. What you want to do is just make sure we've got really, really big want. lumps, first of all. We don't want any loose flour moving around the bowl. And we've got lots of butter that always goes onto the spoon. So just use a knife. A butter knife is fine. Any Slide knife any is fine, butter. Probably. Well, you don't want a sharp chef's knife, so you just want to use a could, butter one. Because it might cut the spoon. Yeah, because we're not slicing or dicing anything at this point. We're just working all of the butter what together. So dicing is if you're making tiny cubes. So if you're slicing something like your carrots and you're dicing them into really, really tiny cubes. So just a little bit of patience for this part, just to keep getting all that moisture out of the butter. And you'll see the lumps get bigger and bigger. And we don't want any loose yes. flour. And then in a couple of minutes, yeah, we're going to get our hands in. No. And we're going to use like a claw motion. And we're going to put our hands down and squeeze everything together. That will squeeze the moisture out of the butter. So we're going to get our hands in in a second. Now, always make sure you've washed your hands before squeeze. you do any cooking and during. So no licking your fingers, as tempting as it is, because we don't want any of those germs to go into the bowl. Okay. So, now you want to use it like a claw, so you need to use all your muscles and squeeze it really hard, keep it low in the bowl because otherwise it will fall onto the floor and you want to get one big ball of dough, so we're just going to spend a couple of minutes squeezing this all together till it comes so together into one ball. Cool. Okay, that's it. This is. That's it, keep squeezing it together. Okay, keep going, so you need to keep gathering it all up. That's it, so don't just squeeze one handful, keep picking up more of the mixture as you go. All in there, into the bowl, don't lift it high, keep it low, keep it below the edge of the bowl. That way you won't lose any of that lovely mixture. 
You should make eight biscuits. So we're going to cut out 16 circles. Yes. Keep squeezing. That's it. Do you want me to show you some of these? Yes, please. Okay, so rub your fingers together over the bowl and make sure you get any butter and any mixture. And then we're going to get the claw. We want to squeeze it all wow, together to make the dough. Claw. It is. So you need to squeeze all the moisture out of the butter. Yep, let me get that into a ball, then you can get your hands in again. And then you're going to shape it into a circle. Just lift your hands up a little bit for me, okay. Lily. Just so we can get it all together into a dough, and then you can roll it round into a circle. Yeah. Then we're going to sprinkle a small amount of flour Why onto the work ahead? surface because people like to know what's coming next, so you can plan what you're doing on the next step. So, once you've got it into a nice circle of dough, we're going to yeah. put a little sprinkling of flour onto the mat, not too much because you don't want to dry up your dough. No, because then you'd have okay. So, can you carefully bits. gather that into a ball for me, please? So, um, out the ball. yeah. Very careful, pop it onto the work surface. Okay, the work surface. That's it, we'll keep our area tidy as we go. So we take just a very small sprinkling of plain flour, just pop it straight onto your work top or your work mat. Spread it on. Pop it on here. Now we're going to chill this in a moment, so we're just going to roll yes. it into a nice ball. So Can I just roll, shape please? it together. We're not going to roll it out just yet. We're going to chill it first. That will help it hold its shape. So just roll it into a nice ball, just with a little bit of flour on the outside. And we're going to knead it. So we're going to knead it for about five minutes. So there's a couple of ways that you can knead. Lily, do you want to just take one step back just so that everybody can see on there? Yeah, but okay. I'm going to take a step back off. So there's a couple of ways of kneading. Yeah. You can fold it over and then turn it 90 degrees, fold it back and stretch it out. So you're using the bottom of your hand here. Are you needing it? Or you can do the whole No, so this is just going to help to get the plain flour working in there, so get all that gluten working in your flour. So you can do it this way. The other way you can do it is like a heart. So you're going to use both hands for this bit and you're using the bottom of your hands, so you're going to put lots of pressure and stretch it out and fold it back and then do the other side so you're making like a heart shape and that's just going to stretch your dough and you just want to do that for a few minutes keep back gathering it back into a ball and put a little bit of flour underneath so it doesn't become too sticky and we're just going to keep turning it round and stretching it out There's some more flour. And just keep bringing it back into a ball so you want your dough to be soft and not dry and crumbly and we no, don't want it to be sticky. Full of a, a part they would. And by part, putting it in the fridge, it just helps to firm up your dough so that when you're cutting the shapes, they don't crack or crumble. And they hold their shape nicely. So we're just going to roll this round so it's nice and smooth. Keep kneading, that's it. So just use those muscles and keep kneading it round, moving it around the worktop. Just keep moving it round, keep kneading, that's it. So keep pressing and make sure you're moving the dough the whole time. So push, fold over, push. then bring it back towards you, that's it. Then push it away from you again, Push. and then fold back over, push away from you again, fold back over, push, fold over, And if you don't know, um, I am my mummy and Mrs B is my mummy, if you don't know, if you thought I was just friend. That's it, and then fold it over again, and if it starts to feel sticky, just make sure you've got a little bit of flour it underneath. Starts, it's sticky. But you don't really want it to be sticky. dry, so you don't want to put big handfuls of yeah. flour, because then it will crumble. So you just want just enough it's so it doesn't really stick to your sticky. hands. It's really sticky. That's it. Then we're just going to finish it off, and we're going to roll it into a ball. Oh. Then, before it goes into I know the... how to do it. Okay, so smooth it nice and round. Then we're going to wrap it in some cling film. To put it in the fridge. If you've got beeswax wraps, you can use those as well. So we just want to wrap it up and then we're just going to leave it in the fridge for about 15 Either minutes. Either cling film or beeswax wraps. You don't need to use a lot of cling film. No. So just watch your fingers. And we just want to wrap it to make sure it's all sealed in there. Sealed? That's you might it. want to get the cling film in, um, in a, on, into a bowl on top so 
into a circle on top in case it... I'm just going to pop that into the fridge. So yeah. And we're going to give that 15 minutes just to make sure it's chilled. Yeah. While that's in there, we're just going to make sure our workspace is nice and clean. And we're going to line our baking trays. So we're using two baking trays. Now you can either line them with butter, so you can just put the butter onto a piece of grease proof Which and put it all over, or use do. your fingers if you don't mind the feel of it, or you can use some grease proof paper. What we do? We're using some grease proof paper to show these today. So we're going to cut it just so that it covers the tray. So ask a grown up to help you with this part if you've got sharp scissors, or if you're one of my older chefs, then you're very capable of doing this and you just want to make sure it goes over so I'm just going to fold the bottom there and then fold the top there and then we're going to do the, no we don't need that one's okay because it goes right to the edge so that one's fine and then we're going to line our second tray so we need two of these keep that nice and neat for me Lily it's Hello. important to be nice and tidy and clean when you're oh. a chef otherwise you get ingredients going in that you might not necessarily want so we have to keep them nice and tight. Oh, too much of okay. the ingredients that you don't want. And then we're just going to leave those to one side. Or too for much. Or, or too much, yeah. You might have too much of the ingredients that you don't want in there. Well, or you might need an ingredient in there, but then you then it might um, stick a little bit more in. It might do. Okay. So, just going to pause there for a second. Your dough's been chilling in the fridge for 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Uh, we're going to take it out in just a moment, aren't we? Yes, yeah. it's ready to roll. If yeah. your grown up would like to put the oven on to preheat, it needs to be on 180 degrees Celsius, or um, for a fan oven, it only needs to be on 160. We're going to have that ready so we can bake them for 15 to 20 minutes till they go nice and golden. No, if you have a fan oven. If you have a fan oven. So I'm just going to get the dough out of the fridge and then we're going to talk you through the next stage. So there's two more main stages to this recipe. Yes. So the dough's been chilling and it should be a little bit firmer now, but still nice and soft. So you want to take a little handful of flour and just sprinkle it with your hands over your work surface making sure you don't get it on the floor just keep it all on there and a little dusting on your hands and then you can put a little dusting on your rolling pin as well. Now when you carefully unwrap your dough you'll see it's still a little bit sticky and shiny on the outside carefully pop it onto the table that's it. Now we want to roll it so it's Maybe about it's half a centimetre thick because we want to get 16 circles. Now it depends on the size cutter that you're using. So I've got a round cutter here which is for the main biscuit and then we have a small heart shaped cutter which goes in the centre. Okay, so but, not on, but not on both. Not, not on all of the biscuits though. No, we're going to talk people through that carefully so that there's no confusion. Okay. So with your rolling pin, you need to stretch it. Now when you roll, good idea before you start with the rolling is just to press down the dough just to flatten it. So it's and not you need to hard. keep you need to keep lifting and making sure the flower. So lift and turn. Okay, so you want to push it gently and then you now it's a nice soft dough, so don't push it too hard. Okay. And just keep turning it around. So if Lily, you if you can start rolling floor. it out for me. Not like you push it to the floor. No. Can you start rolling it out for me now? That's it. So do one roll and then very carefully lift and turn and then roll it the other way. And we're going to about half a centimetre. So I've got um, a ruler here that I'm going to use so you can just see the thickness. Now just be careful because you see where you've rolled you it a little bit You could cut the thin. dough. And just we don't you want it. cut the dough kind yeah. of. We want it nice and even. Cut the okay. dough. Now you need to just lift and check it's not stuck. So very carefully, okay. Just want to lift it and move it around, and just let's just check the thickness before you lift it. See, that's it. Okay, so that's about the right thickness now. Now, a couple of tips when you are doing, just move that. That's it. You leave that there for a second. Let's just make sure that one's there. Okay. So you can usually feel the thickness. Can you leave it there for me? Thank you. Okay. When you do your cutting, so that you don't have to re-roll too many times, because the more you have to gather up the dough into a ball, the you more it can crack and crumble. I don't know what to say. 
what you need to do, okay, you need to put it near the edge. So don't start cutting in the middle. You need to cut it in the edge. Now you can have the fluted side or the round side. So the fluted is the little wiggly edge on there. Or you can have the round side. And we want to try and cut 16 of these, okay? So you want to go near the edge and just like give it a very gentle twist. But be careful, okay? You could rip your dough off the tree. Like that, yeah. And then you want to go right next to each other. And we're going to keep right. going. As close as... If you can't go right right next to each other, go as close as you can next to each other. Okay, so concentrate. You can talk in a minute, sweetheart. Let's concentrate because you don't want to make them the wrong shape or the wrong size. We're just going to check our thickness on there. Good, so you want about half a centimetre. If, um, okay. if the um, dough gets stuck in the cutter, be very careful when you're pushing it through onto your hand. Because if you push it too hard, you could break it, couldn't you, Mummy? You could. With so your fingernails. Keep going. So you've got three so far. And keep going. And then when you can't cut any more, we're going to roll it back into a ball and see if we can get some more um, out so of it. So if you use your, if you push too hard with your fingernails or push too hard, hard with your hands, when it comes out, it'll just rip it. It will. Right. Can either, you, no, no. So concentrate. And then you need to put them really close, that's it. It will either just rip in the cutter or fall out of the cutter and rip in half. Okay, right, let's pause the chattering. That's it, and let's concentrate because we've only got five so far. So we need to try and get 16 if we can. Ours is a slightly bigger cutter, so if you're using a smaller one, we might find that we get 12. You might find that you get 16 if you're using a smaller cutter. Yeah, but if you roll it out again, then you will get As long 16. as you have an even number, because you want one biscuit for the bottom and one biscuit for the top. Okay, keep looking at the dough when you do them, because yeah. that was nearly in the middle, so you could probably get two out of there. Okay, and then we'll re-roll. And as long as you've got an even number, so that you can match them up in pairs. So take your time with this part, because it is important you get the shapes right. I think we'll probably get about 12 from here, which will give us six nice biscuits. So when you've cut as many as you can out of your first roll, roll try not to be rolled too many times. Make sure you've got some flour underneath again. Roll it into a ball, and then again to half try a centimetre. So very carefully. Try and do it again. Right, I would roll rather than squashing this time. Because see where it's getting a little bit thin? You, yep. don't, you want it to be the same thickness as these biscuits here. So just start from the middle, that's it, and roll them out. And we're probably going to get about four circles. Remember to lift so it doesn't stick. And you yep. want to do four. And see how now, it's ripped. Oh, yeah, so you just have to roll over there to bring it back together. Now let's have a look because that looks about the right thing. Look how it's gone from being ripped to smooth again. Smooth. Okay. Because you roll so over it here. Um, very carefully. Now watch where you put in your cutter this time, okay? So yeah. otherwise you'll have to re-roll and then it just starts to get a bit crumbly or it can get really, really sticky. If you've got warm hands and you're handling it a lot, it starts to just stick to you and become quite messy. You might find we need to stretch this out a smidge in a minute. We should get one from here, but see that's a little bit thick on the corner. We're just gonna level that out a tiny bit. That's it. No, we won't. And then we'll pop them here. And we're putting them in twos. So we're gonna put them in pairs. In, in case you get muddled up. Okay, just watch out a minute. We're just gonna bring that round here. We should be able to get two more from there. Mm. Nope. Look where you're putting your cutter. That's it. Close to the edge, not in the middle, just because it wastes a lot of that mixture. We don't want them to go too thin, because we can burn them, so you have to be careful. But sometimes when you're doing your dough, um, when you pick them up um, and they're like this one, you can sometimes make the edges all blunt, like that. Okay, right, pop that carefully on here so you don't drop it or lose its shape. And then we need to do Let's one see. more. Yep, you need at least one more pair on there. Because we're getting lots of pairs. You need to be very careful. Okay. Right, you'll get one more, then we might be able to re roll and do one more pair. So do one out of the middle of there for we. Now that one we've got to re roll because it's got a bit of a crack in it, so I'm going to do that one again. Put that one next to that one for me, please, and we'll see if we can get... We don't want it to be too thin. If you have any leftover dough, you can always make just a little biscuit that's its own shape. Um, so we'll see whether so we can, we can get... it can be square, rectangle, anything. It can, so we don't like to waste anything. Even circle. So make sure... You can even use your circle, your cutter. Okay, 
Can you get two out of there for that me? side or that side to make your That's biscuit? It. And then let's see. You? Okay, so we're going to stop with those and we'll leave our spare dough. We can put that in the fridge for now because we need to do. Looks like an eyebrow. So that. Can you roll that into a ball for me? An eyebrow. Yes. That's crazy. You are. Roll that up for me and we'll pop that back in the cling film. We might make a little shape later on. Okay, so now once you've counted your circles, we're going to choose half of them. So if you count how many we've got, Lily. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14. So 14. can you remember what half of 14 is? Um, seven. Okay, seven. so for us, we're going to use half. Now with half of them, we're going to cut out a heart shape from the middle and we can choose any seven. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, six and seven. Okay. And I'm going to show you on a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is just put the heart cutter in the middle. You only do half because the other half are going to be used as the bottom bit of the um, biscuit. They are. They? Now you can cook these hearts. They will take a little bit less time to cook in the oven, but you can bake them so you're not wasting any. So can you please do this one for me? And take yeah. your time, you want it in the middle, give it a good press and a twist. Yeah. That's it. I, that's okay, so that's concentrate. That. In the, right in the middle, give it a good push. And lift it very carefully, because what you don't want is to break the outside of the biscuit. So you can leave that there for a moment, and I'll peel those out in a second. Can you do this one as well, please? So we're going to just cut out seven. So take your time, make sure you've got a lovely heart shape. That's it. And this one, number four. And then that's okay, so we'll pop that heart out of there. We're supposed to pop the heart out. And then do number out five for me, please. Are we are supposed to pop them out, yeah. Five. And this one, number six. And I'll lift out the hearts with the knife in a moment. And then one more, so we need to do number seven as well over here. Oh. On this one, number seven. Okay. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to bring one a little bit closer with a butter knife. Or a normal knife. Once you've taken out the heart, we're going to score them with little lines going around the outside. Right so we're just going to that, use a butter knife. Right on that, it has little lines up on the outside. And we're just going to go round the edge, so do little marks in there on the pattern. So very gently. The heart needs just to Yeah, we're going to take those hearts out in a moment. I'm just going to show everybody this one because everyone works at different speeds. And we're just going to put very light, so you're not cutting all the way through, you're just doing really light we're ones. And once they're on the baking tray, I will show you, I'll bring it closer to the camera so you can see, because I know it's a bit tricky from back there. So we're going to do that on each of the ones that we've cut the hearts out, then we're going to put them on the baking tray and then we'll show everybody, okay? What is it you'd like to say, Lily? You're not cutting out big chunks of dough no. um, um, on, the, um, on the outside of the biscuit, so you just have the heart shape in the middle. Oh. That then okay. if you did that that would then So I'm gonna bring over some baking trays and then I can would show go you. All wrong, wouldn't it? it would. So these are the trays that we lined earlier on. Yeah. yeah. And you might find it easier to lift them on first of all and then do the lines. Okay. And be careful yet yeah, not to squash the hearts if you're going to bake them later. But I would do those in a separate tray because they won't take very long to do. Now we need to very carefully because you want to try and keep their round shape. So when you yeah, put them on the tray, or if you're not, not careful enough when you pick them up, they would rip. You can use um, a fish slice if you want to to lift them off the surface and keep or, that shape. If you're too hard, and um, when you pick them up, uh, then no will happen. They'll rip, won't they? Okay, so we're going to pop them on the tray, and then we're going to do our lines on there. But this one we demonstrated on being not. And make sure you leave a space hard. between them so they'll spread just a little bit so just leave a little bit of a gap on there and we're going to come and show everybody in a moment and then you can see what the lines are like and then Lily's going to carefully do the lines on. Yep. Now that one just be careful because there's a little bit can of a gap. Can you move my thing? Yep. So just so that you can see 
Okay, coming a bit close to the camera. This is all new to us. We've got little lines just going around the edge. So you can see on this one here, we've done those. Right, now very carefully, Lily. Can you do the same thing with the knife, but we're not slicing. We're just doing really, really gently on there, okay? So very, very gently. And you just want to go right the way around the circle. So these are the tops of our biscuits. Then we're also going to put the bottoms onto the tray in a moment. So I'm just giving Lily some room on there. And we should fit Can seven onto each one. Around. Right, they're a little bit deep, so do you see where they're really shallow? So you yep. need to be super gentle. They, um, because otherwise what will happen is when you pick up this biscuit, it's all going to fall apart, look. So yep. you need to do it really, really light. gently. Light, yeah, light and gentle. See that one there where you picked that up before? It's got a little bit of crack in it, so you've just got to be see? very careful. Like that. like that. That's better, yeah. So don't go very far. It's just making a little bit and just leave that one plain. And I'm just going to put the plain ones onto the baking tray as well. So they will be the base of the biscuits. And we're going to melt some lovely jam later on to put in the middle. So just spread those out on the tray. Leave a little bit of a gap in between them. That's better. So just nice light lines. You don't have to do the lines if you don't want to. Um, you can leave them plain. Or you could do a different pattern if you want to do some swirls on there instead. Or zigzags. Your biscuits, so you can decorate them how you like. Or zigzags. Or you could just put... Or you could just move them to it. Why is there a plain one? So that one just needs to be plain. If you can keep doing those other three on there. But not that one. Not the big one. Not the big plain one. Yeah, that one, but just not that, that plain one. Yep, yeah, everything has got a heart on. I'm just putting our spare hearts that not, we cut out the middle. But not the hearts. I'm just putting our spare hearts onto a piece of greaseproof paper. In case you hadn't already guessed, Lily is a chatterbox. So we're working on it, aren't we? Yes. Lots to say. So we just put those on there and then I'll bake those later on, probably for about um, 10 that minutes. was a little bit of a too light line. That's it, so keep over. going round. Not like you're chopping um, really hard carrots and cucumbers. And no, stuff. that's true. Not Once we've done our lines in a moment, we're going to sprinkle them with just a little or bit of sugar. However you or like, um, and once we've decorated them, however, once you've decorated them, however you like, yeah. or just left them plain. Okay, so just do those two at the top there, oh, yeah. and you've got one over there I'm as sorry. well. That's alright, you've got one over there as well. Do those two, that's it, so those two, and then you can do the other one in it's a moment. It's a bit hard to do the top. And then we're going to weigh out some caster sugar, just to sprinkle on top of those when they're cooking. And they'll take about 15 to 20 minutes in the oven, so just until they go nice and golden. And then we're going to leave them to go cold. So we'll have a little bit of a pause once they've gone in the oven. Yeah, we and we need them to go really cold. So you've got two more to go. Careful, yeah. nearly lost your biscuits. So just do this one here, and, and that's one over there for me. And then we're going to tell everyone how much sugar we need to weigh out just to sprinkle on the top. Thank you for making the jam, Mummy. You're welcome. I do have a little... Yes, but keep going because we're I, waiting for you to do these. I do have a little baby sister who is asleep right now in the pram in case you ask if you want to know where she is right now. Yes, it's a very rare moment, isn't it, which is why we're doing these. Isn't here. Okay, I'm here. Hmm. So lots of you will obviously be at home at the moment, I would imagine. Well, look, all of you. Okay, can you watching. keep going on that one? Because your audience are waiting for you to finish. That's it. Just doing nicely with the pattern. Now we used 80 grams of caster sugar earlier on in our dough. We're just going to use 10 grams now, so we're going to weigh out 10 grams, and we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of sugar on the top of each biscuit before they go into um, the um, oven. The so lines, what? Lines. So we're going to weigh out 10 grams of caster sugar. Okay. So make sure when you start your zero scales, they're on zero again, and just check your weighing in grams. It's only a tiny smidge, and we don't need very much on here. So How many really grams again? 10, so just a 1 and a 0. Okay, okay. Yeah. and then we're just going to take oh, a little smidgen. Okay. I'm just using a tablespoon, and then we just want to sprinkle it carefully on top of the biscuits. 
If you've got clean hands, you can just take a pinch and sprinkle them over. So you just take a little pinch I don't know how. and just sprinkle. Can I take a pinch? Yep, so we've got nice clean hands. Make sure you haven't been doing any tasting before you do this part. And just sprinkle onto each cookie. But at the top you might want to put a lot um, a little bit more than you put on the outside. Yeah, so we don't need too much because we're going to use some lovely sweet jam in there as well later. And just sprinkle it all over the top. And then we're going to be popping these into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes and then leaving them to go nice and cold. Then I'll spread it on the That's it, so spoon. just spread that one out. Okay, I'll just bring everybody to show them. Let's see. <laughs> we'll get used to the camera. Okay, so you can see there we've got our biscuits ready to go in. And if you ask a grown up to put them into the oven, we're going to pop them in for 15 to 20 minutes. Thank you, Lily. So you want to bake them for 15 to 20 minutes, just pop a little timer on and keep an eye on them until they go nice and golden and then we're going to let them go nice and cool and then we will carry on and tell you how to decorate them. Now that your biscuits have been cooling down they should be ready for us to sandwich them together and sprinkle with some icing sugar. So for this part we just have warmed up a little bit of strawberry jam just to make it easier to spread. Um, so you just need to put it either in the microwave for about a minute or on a low heat on the pan, just mix it around so it's lovely and smooth. Now do be careful, you might want a grown up to help you with this part or just let it cool down for a couple of minutes first. What we're going to do is we're then going to spread our jam onto the whole round biscuits. It doesn't have to be so, strawberry jam. Like this one here. Okay, so we're going to spread the top of there with our jam. It doesn't have to be strawberry jam, does it? No, you could use different flavours of jam. Yeah, I'll show you on one, one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich the strawberry in the middle with the heart on top for the biscuit and then we're going to sprinkle a little bit of icing sugar. Now it is but warm so Lily... you don't so have Lily, to put the heart on top do you? Well you could have them as plain biscuits but we're going to make them as our nice heart biscuits so you want a generous amount of jam you in the middle. You don't have to have the um, hearts you cook, the mini hearts you cook. No, no, we don't need those parts. We're going to see the red strawberry you should see through the biscuit, through the hole. Because if you put the heart biscuit on the top you won't see, you won't the, see jam. the jam. So you want to match up a nice looking circle and then very gently press it on top and I'll show you what this one looks like because I don't think you can see with Lily being just there. No. So you've got a nice layer like this and then you've got your strawberry on the biscuit on top. Never going off. Okay now it's very warm so what you want to do Lily is take a nice spoonful of jam, pop it Isn't in the middle. Big? Yeah. In fact, if I put a spoonful on each one, you can then do the spreading, can't you? And use the back of the spoon just to spread the jam all can you over the biscuit. Spread it off, please. Yeah, now carefully so yeah. they look nice. You don't want to go over the edge, just in the middle, a little dollop. If you go over the edge, then um, it's bad because. Well, it's not the end of the world, but if you want it to look nice and tidy, just pop it in the middle and then just use the back of the spoon just to spread the jam all over the biscuit. You could use a knife, you see. You could use a knife. You could, I find the back of a teaspoon works quite nicely on these because you can just get that little circular motion going round. That's it. A bit over the edge. That's okay, don't worry too much. And then you want to make sure the jam's nice and cool before you tuck into it. I these. did want to make these. You I did? Was, Oops. If you ask, um, where's the uh, chocolate thing? Chocolate cheesecake. Where's the chocolate cheesecake? I was the one who wanted to make these so last night with my mum, but since my baby sister was crying, we <laughs> couldn't. So my mum said this could be the practice video with me. Oh, yeah. Um, Why did I have chocolate jam? cheesecake to follow? Okay, so Lily, now once the jam's on, okay. finish that one, and then we're going to match up some nice circles. Okay, so this is quite a big one here. And then what you want to do is just very up. gently and carefully make sure they're nice and level. If the jam goes out the side and squeezes out the side, it's okay. It doesn't matter. 
and you can if when you see the heart you want to put a little bit more jam in the middle you can do if you'd like a little bit more jam on your biscuit so once you've got them sandwiched together you can just put a little one drizzle thing. of jam would you like to see this one Ellie? one thing um, if the Her. jam comes out the side you might just want to press it down if the jam comes out the side doesn't matter does it no it's money doesn't really matter. Then you can use any jam you've got left just to fill up the shape. Now this one was a little bit wonkier. Oh, I like to put a bit more jam in the middle of. That was the one you did before, so that's a little bit wonkier. Um, I'd like and then to just a fill the middle of the hearts with your jam. One. That's it. Being careful not to get it on the biscuit. Well done. And one thing doesn't matter when you eat it, um, but it gets on the biscuit. It does. Well, it doesn't matter you get it on the biscuit because when you eat it, you're going eat to get, it, yeah. eat it on. You're going to get it on the biscuit anyway, aren't you? That's very true. The inside sides, but covering the biscuit doesn't matter because the biscuit is on the jam, so it doesn't really. Because that's literally the main thing that should happen to the biscuit. The jam should go on the biscuit. Okay, but not on the top. And the last step is we're just going to take our sieve that we had earlier. I'm just going to hold it over the top of the biscuit. And put some icing and sugar. And put some icing sugar in. Her. So we're going to put a little bit of icing sugar. We don't but want too much. if the icing sugar gets on the tray, it doesn't matter. No, so you're going to. Because already cooked, so you can just clean that. We've kept our biscuits on the greaseproof paper. Yes. And it's just on a chopping but board. But you don't have to keep them on the greaseproof paper, do you, Mummy? No, you don't have to, but it saves a little bit of mess on there. And you just want a light dusting on there. Not a lot, though. No, we don't want. And it doesn't too matter much if the icing sugar gets on um, in the jam or on the jam, because that's basically what should happen. Okay, you happy? No try. Are you happy? There's enough on there. Yep. So just give a little tap no, inside of your hand. Just a little that's bit. That's it. Not too much. I like we don't it. want them to be completely white. Maybe a little bit on this one. The rest of that on there. That's as well. it. There you go. It looks like snow. Oh, it does look like snow. And How did you know I was going to say that? I know you did. And that looks perfect. Then you can just press that one on there. That back in the bag. Well, no, because we've used it, we'll leave that one on there this time. And then what we'll do is we'll try and show up on our biscuits, but we we'll have to be very careful we don't drop them. Well, maybe later. Lily's keen to tuck in and enjoy them. Right, I'm going to try and point the camera down. Bear with me. And just see if we can show you the finished biscuits. There you go. There are all the biscuits. And that's the end of the lesson. So we would just like to say thank you for joining us. Um, it is our first video, so things will get better. And we'll um, see you soon. Happy cooking. Bye. Bye.